system for the miners. So if there was going to be a squeeze, any kind of shifting or movement in the roof, these would begin to pop, crack, make all kinds of noise, and then visibly warp so the miners would know it was time to get out. They say the timber is talking, miners are walking. <laughs> so if you guys hear any kind of weird popping, cracking sounds, please put your hand up nice and high so I don't want to get out of the mine. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> so if this isn't what's holding up the roof, what is? Well, this mine is actually held together through a series of pillars and chambers known as Bruin Pillar Mining. So, up here, this is an above view of that 190 slope we just came down in. What you're currently standing in is what's known as the gangway. That's just this large open area they're going to be pulling most of the carts back and forth through. Then on either side of your chambers, those are the largest areas you're pulling your coal out from. Also, where the room in room and pillar mining comes from. And then every single one of these black rectangles are massive, usually 60 by 40 pillars of coal that are left in. So it's actually the coal itself that's holding up the roof. Now in this kind of mining, you need to leave in more coal than you can actually take out. But since this runs underneath all of Scranton, depending on how you feel about Scranton, very important we keep it supportive. <laughs> it must be from the area. <laughs> so another thing you might have noticed was that loud rushing water as we came down, right? Well, some people think that that's because it's been raining, which yes, rain can contribute to more water, but even on the driest day of the year, there's still gonna be that massive amount of water coming in. Because as you can see from this chart, the majority of this mine is under the natural water level. So what that means is with all of that water just naturally permeating through the earth directly into this mine, well, it would eventually fill up and we'd have to do the rest of the tour with scuba gear, which we cannot afford. So when this mine was first operational, there would have been massive pumps to just pump that water out 24-7. Now that's a very expensive, very involved process. So we no longer handle it that way. What we do instead is we siphon all of that water down into these two beds below, which we no longer have access to. And then they let out through a 42 inch borehole somewhere over an old forge. I think it's near uh, Pagnotti Park if you ever want to check it out. That lets all that water out into the Lackawanna, flows into the Susquehanna, makes its way all the way to the Chesapeake Bay where unfortunately we are. It's a source of pollution for them. Oh, unless you're from Chesapeake Bay, in which case we filtered it thoroughly. <laughs> Nailed it. 
<laughs> so, so this wine first opened in 1860 and ran until 1965, so a little bit over 100 years. We're after it closed down and reopened as the tour mine that you see today. But what you're going to be experiencing is only about 1% of what this mine originally was. It was part of a much larger mine known as the Continental Mine. Would have gone about seven miles in either direction. Absolutely massive. For its time, you could walk completely underground from Scranton straight through Wilkes-Barre. But I am way too tired for that. So if you guys are cool with it, we'll just kind of like stick to where the tour is, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. All right. So any questions, comments, concerns? So just a couple of things as we're going through. Oh, what? <laughs> All right, back where you go. <laughs> 